This is Zeiss Presents Full Exposure, the weekly resource for news, trends, and the people who influence the world of photography and cinematography. Hosted by veteran photographer and filmmaker Jim Camp. On this episode of Full Exposure, we're on location in New York for the Photo Plus Expo. Inside, we'll chat with photographers from across the U.S. who flock to New York once a year for one of the largest imaging gear shows. The Kansas-based photo team that make up Wild Child Photography, Kim Baer and Amy Cyphers, work in a growing field of portraiture, hybrid photography. When they shoot their family heritage sessions, one of them shoots video, the other does the stills. Hi, Kim. Nice to meet you. Hi. Thanks for having me. So I heard some interesting stuff about your story, okay. about you switching over to Zeiss lenses. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, um, we made the switch probably about a year and a half ago. We were Canon shooters, had a whole line of Canon lenses, um, but we were also still in video shooters. And the Sony stabilization alongside with the Zeiss stabilization in their lenses allowed us to hold, hand hold 85, 135 millimeter lenses, which for portraiture, it allowed us to seamlessly go back and forth without having to have any rigs or any tripods um, and still keep the same look of our stills matching our video, which was super important to us for our business. But other, there are other brands that have stabilization stuff. What was different and what made you make that switch? What was the difference? Um, the weight of it, the, um, the bodice system lenses were just the construction, the weight were easy to handhold, easy to maneuver, the autofocus alongside with the Sony um, facial tracking, all of that just made it really a dream system. Um, when we made the decision to switch to Sony, the Zeiss lens is just paired beautifully and it went with our look that we, we just loved. And your, your bread and butter is what? what what's your business? About? We do children and family portraiture. So we are moving quickly, um, we are nature, we're outside, um, and we needed something that allowed us to quickly pick it up, go, and get the best of the both still in video worlds and still have a beautiful, crisp quality image in both. Can you just talk a little bit about how you do both stills and video? I'm always curious yeah. to hear how people do that. Um, well, we go with whatever our exposure is for our stills. So we, I know it's not correct, but if we are at, you know, especially the Sony's, we shoot at slow motion at 120 frames a second. So if we keep it around 120, 150 one of a second, it's pretty cinematic looking. Um, but if we're faster, we're faster in our shutter. Um, we, we just toggle, I shoot in manual focus or manual, um, my manual mode. I don't go into video mode and I literally just hit the record button. Um, capture the connection, the emotion, the scene in front of me, and then hit it off and snap the photos. So we are always back and forth. So you don't use any kind of rig at all? We don't. Camera strap. <laughs> um, you know, we have, cr we have gimbals and we have those things, but they are not, the motorized mechanisms don't allow you to hit your shutter very easily. They're cumbersome. Um, and we found with the stabilization in the lenses, we honestly don't need it. So we're very happy with not having to try to chase children with tripods and all of those things that just don't make it conducive to really capturing the motion and the, the movement that we're seeing. Do you have a favorite lens? My 85 Thavatis. Oh, yeah. It stays on my camera for portraits, for video, and for food. 85? 85. I love it. I love the compression in it. I usually shoot it wide open. Um, wow. So love it both for video and stills. It is gorgeous. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, what's on your list of equipment that you would like to have? Not being paid by Zeiss to say it, but the new 40, we got to try it out um, a couple weeks ago. And the macro, the, for food photography to be able to do lay flats, um, it is stunning to be able to get really close and get the detail of the food I was shooting and then get the whole scene. I was blown away by it. So that's my next one. So you kind of do everything. You do people, you do food. What else do you do? 
What don't you do? Don't do a lot of cities. We're from the heartland. We're from Kansas. Um, so we don't, this is, New York City has been kind of eye-opening and a little scary. Um, but I can see why street photographers, I mean, there, is, there are stories every corner, everywhere you turn. Um, I might become a street photographer if I stay here too long. Um, no, I, you know, I actually took home a Loxia lens from the last time I was with Tony, and I took it home in February. And there is nothing to photograph outside in Kansas in February that is pretty. So I started shooting food, flowers, anything I could get my hands on, because I knew I was going to have to send it back to him, um, and fell in love with that lens. I was shooting the 85, the Loxia 85, and loved it. I did video with it, I did everything with it, and loved it for that as well. So, May I ask you how you got started? In photography? Yeah. Um, I'm probably like any other momographer, my kids. Um, you take pictures of your kids, and then your kids get tired of you, and so you start taking pictures of your friends' kids, and then before you know it, you have a studio, and you have stuff, and you're paying rent. Um, and, but I, it's a creative outlet as a mom, you know, we're the day in, day out of busyness of our kids. And so having this creative thing that I got to do, um, as well as document my own history with my kids, I fell in love with it. Out of curiosity, did you start with Zooms? No, and then I, I've always been a prime shooter. I was a nifty 50, kind of, that was my first lens. And I got an 85, then a 135, so I have always, gravitated much more to a prime format than a zoom. Zooms confuse me. I'm always either focusing or changing something that I shouldn't be, so I actually prefer the simplicity and the clarity of a prime lens. Well, plus, primes make you more disciplined, too, don't you think? Um, I do. I don't mind moving. You know, I zoom with my feet. I don't, I like getting That's different pers one, yeah. I like getting different perspectives, and so I'm always, you know, up and down and in and out and, um, you know, and I think that even the video aspect, watching motion happen through video helped me see my stills in, all different, in a totally different way. I was looking for unique perspectives in video and different angles and different shots and reflective surfaces and all different things that really helped that, that observing through watching it in motion, I think really identified some really cool factors in my still work. Um, but moving around a lot has always been part of my process. That is definitely a good one to end on. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, zoom with your feet. Zoom with your feet. Good for the heart rate. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kim. Okay, thank you. Hi. Thanks for joining us, Amy. Thanks for having me. So we talked to Kim, we talked to Kim earlier um, about more of the technical stuff, about uh -huh. the 40 and stuff, but wanted to get your take on your specialty in your business and how your lenses, the lenses that you're using work for that. Okay. Um, our specialty is really families and connection. And so um, what we, our gear is very versatile. When we switched um, to Sony and Zeiss, we just became a lot lighter and I'm able to capture emotion and capture moments a lot easier um, because I'm not swapping lenses. I'm not worried as much about stability because I have it built in um, to my equipment and I'm able to just think more about my client and more about prompting them, you know, to do little hugs and um, squeeze in together and things that make beautiful portraits and also motion um, makes beautiful video. So, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the specifics of the heirloom or heritage uh -huh. business and how that interplays with your selection of lenses and so forth. We shoot what we call heritage sessions every month and those are family sessions and um, they're about 30 minutes long which is perfect for dads and kids. Um, so what we capture in that amount of time is lots of, we like people to squeeze in, we like people to look at each other, um, and then they're done. It's not a long drawn out, we're not with them all day, it's, it's a quick session, but we're able to capture so much. Um, a lot, a lot, because there's two of us, 
but also because our gear is so versatile and we're just moving around and we're fast and we get that and there's not enough time for people to wear out or get tired. Um, it's just, it makes a beautiful session and we're able to do about four or five in one evening and sometimes we also add a morning session onto that and do a couple in the morning as well. So you're both shooting yes. during that. How do you pick the location? We always choose um, beautiful, we live in a very, um, lots of trees in our area. So we live in a, areas that provide really beautiful vignettes and I've been a photographer long enough there to know I have the specific places named and they're even on the website like we're going to be shooting this month at, we call it the Magic Forest or we have a Wisconsin Avenue that's just beautiful in the fall that we use, it's just a Brookline street that we use a lot. and. Um, People will pick specific that they know that we're going to shoot there and that's where they're going to go. Um, and we know what the light's going to do and we know how it's going to work. And so that's just where we go. And it doesn't matter if there's, you know, five families in one location. Each family session is so different um, just because of the connections we're capturing that it's specific to them. It feels very custom. So, so tell me about your first year sessions. Okay. So we have what we call a cherished collection. And what makes our studio different than everybody else is we're taking little video clips at each session. And at the end of that first year, we do three sessions, um, newborn, usually six months, and a year. So um, at the end of that first year, we're give it, the product that we're giving them is a video that has, you know, tiny, teeny, curled up baby, and then running toddler. And it's such a special thing that we have that's so different from everybody else and um, such a neat product. Yeah, what, what, is the, um, what is the average length of a session? I'm kind of surprised to hear that it's so it's short. short. Yeah. yeah. We have, for our heritage sessions, they are about 30 minutes. Um, we do custom sessions as well, but we are usually done within 30 minutes just because I know what poses to get and I know what works and I know what prompts to use to get the emotion that I want to capture, and um, then we just go to the next family. Are these are these large families? I mean, can you do a large family in that short a session? If I have a really large family, I give them two spots on the schedule. But typically, I can do a family with four kids in that time. And we're doing portraits of the kids by themselves. There's always mom and dad by themselves, the whole family. And we're also, a lot of times, incorporating video. So um, we can do it. Are you lighting, or is this all natural, available light? It's all natural light. In our studio, we, we actually just remodeled our studio specifically for newborns, which that is a much longer session. But um, we knocked a wall out and just put a giant window, and so we were able to shoot video and photos there with natural light as well. A lot of reflectors sometimes, depending on the day, but yeah. Yeah, and I asked earlier, um, What's your favorite lens and why? So can you tell me that? Yes, my favorite lens is the Bodice 135. Um, I love it for families. It's also surprisingly like, it's so lightweight and I'm able to um, handhold even when I decide to push record, which I've never been able to do with the brand I was using before. It's just an amazing lens and I, t I have it on my camera probably 90% of the time. Are you, um, are you shooting video? Are you both shooting video? Do you interchange it? How do you work it when you're both shooting? There are times when we, we both shoot video um, for a specific client, but typically I'm the still photographer and Kim will be the videographer. Um, but there are times when I'm alone at a shoot and I do both. So um, it's a lot of the settings I use for stills, I just also shoot video with, and I know that's not correct, but We've never had anyone say they could tell, and I think just the cameras and lenses do such a great job um, that I'm able to do both. Because I'm a photographer that shoots video. I'm not gonna claim to be anything else. Um, but pushing record and just adding that little element, we have seen it really boost our sales, um, especially when we bring people back into our studio for a session, a sales session. If we play a little video first, even if it's just a few clips that we captured, put to music, um, it raises our sales significantly. 
and people love seeing themselves on video loving their kids, especially moms. We are always behind our cameras. I'm speaking, you know, from experience as well, but watching, you know, a mom watching herself with her newborn or with her family, you know, embracing them, the movement really, really helps our sales, but it gives them something that is, I mean, we call it a heritage session for a reason. It's something that they will have forever and it's just beautiful and um, emotional. It adds a level of emotion that you can't see in a still, if that makes sense. <laughs> That's great. That's a nice way to sum it up. Yeah. Thanks a lot for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Jason Vong and Vivian Lee are a video blogging team based in Southern California who shoot weddings and review camera gear via their popular YouTube channel. And Jason, Vivian, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so give us a little background on your channel and how you got started in all this. Okay, so I run a YouTube channel where I do camera review slash tutorial on hybrid shooting. And hybrid shooting is pretty much a fancy word of saying someone who shoots both photos and videos, which I think a lot of people are inherently hybrid shooters. So how I got started with this channel is one day I was kind of like asking her, you know, kind of deciding on my next camera. I was like, I kind of want a camera that does great photos and great videos, you know. And three years ago, there, there wasn't really much out in the market, except Sony has like the A7R2 and the A7S2, I believe, which is a full yeah. frame camera, and it shot amazing stills and has 4K videos, and I was instantly sold on that camera. So I was like asking her, I was like, should I jump, make the, make the jump, get the, get the system? And she there was like, like yeah. one time he came back and he just like threw up two pictures on the screen, and he was like, don't look at anything, like which one looks better? And I was just like, okay, and I was like, that one. And he's like, okay, which video looks better? And I was like, that one. And he was like, oh, both of those are the Sony. I guess I have to jump ship and like go full into Sony. And then that's from there is how he got started. And then I was like, okay. And the thing was, at the time, not a lot of people were making videos, mm -hmm. tutorials, and reviews on the Sony A7R2 and the S2. So I figured, why not create a channel where I can contribute back to a platform that I learned so much from. And that's how we got started with the channel. We started reviewing, you know, Sony cameras and as well as Zeiss lenses yeah, as well. So when, when was this you got started doing this? Oh man, probably three years, ago? three years ago. Yeah, around 2015, the end of 2015, I believe. So even, that, I mean, it's not that long ago. So even then there wasn't really a lot specific to that. Yeah, there wasn't. But Jason's always had experience making like digital content for oh, YouTube, yeah. Yeah. like based on his work and things like that. So like making that transition into making camera videos wasn't that different. It was just a different topic that we were making videos on. So, yeah. yeah, I've always had interest in making videos specifically. And how I got into photography and hybrid shooting in general was um, I used to work for a, a Japanese pop culture website. And at the <laughs> time, a lot of Japanese rock bands came to play in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So I was like, can I interview, do a video interview with the band? And their manager was like, no video interview, but I can give you a press photo badge. And I was like, how do you shoot photos? I don't know how to operate my camera to shoot photos. <laughs> but without knowing what to do, I shot the whole entire concert. I mean, the photos came out all right. It wasn't the best, but I was, I fell in love with it. I got addicted to it. So how I got into photography was pretty much shooting concert photography, but video, it's been my passion. So I kind of just combined the two with what I talk about on my YouTube channel today. And it's been a lot of fun. You must be in gear heaven here when you're at this, at this show. So what do you, what do you do while you're here when it's surrounded by those? How do you, you know, I mean, being a reviewer, how do you decide what you're going to look at? You know, other than the big, the big places, what, what you know. I think it really comes down to like what I am personally interested in. Like it's kind of hard to talk about some things that if that doesn't really catch your eyes or you have like no prior knowledge to. But then, you know, just kind of like looking at what came out, especially within Zeiss or Sony or any of the products that we're interested in, it's just so easy because we're just like, oh my God, it's here, it's out. We gotta yeah. play with it. And then everyone has it set up for you to play with. So we just run over there and we just start playing with it and that's when we start getting our first impressions. Cause that's like what you want, the organic experience of like picking up that yeah. new lens or new camera for the first time. And that's the thing, you know, it's one thing to watch reviews or watch impressions on the internet, and it's another to just like come out and play with it for yourself. And I'm like itching to play with the 40 millimeter right now. <laughs> it's like right behind you. I know. And I'm we like, haven't touched oh, it yet. It's like, it's right there. <laughs> so have you shot with it yet? 
I, I, I took one photo <laughs> before stepping into this interview, so. <laughs> <laughs> he had it in his hands, and I was like, no, come on, we have to yeah, do this. And this I interview, and I was like, okay, all right, it can wait, it can wait. So, um, what kind of content are you creating? What did you start creating, and what are you creating now? And how does the how does the Zeiss stuff play into all that? So, how I got started was just essentially just shooting with the camera. Again, we mentioned like at the time, not a, not a lot of people had uh, videos out on the Sony A7R2 or the S2. So I just started creating videos like, oh, here's how how the autofocus works. You know, here are the specific features that I find really interesting for video, and here's the features that I find. Um, interesting for photos. So I started experimenting more and more, and like the thing that really got me to shoot Sony was their amazing autofocusing system. So I started dabbling into like their native lenses, you know, like the Sony Zeiss 55, and then when I heard about the bodice lenses coming out, like um, I bought the 18 because at the time it was like the fastest wide angle lens that existed at the time, and I, and I just fell in love with it, and I think it's like a really, incredibly light lens with the autofocus. I mean, like when, when, you, when you pair it up with the Sony cameras, the autofocus just works fantastic. So I love it for photos, I love it for videos. And the great thing is because we do a lot of, um, like Jason also has wedding videography, so a lot of times we are looking for that light, perfect hybrid oh, yeah. lens. And that's a really big component because we're always like on the go, taking the lens on the go. So when we saw like the Zeiss lenses, we're like, dude, it's light and it can shoot great videos, and can shoot great photos. And that's really how we like started diving into the system of like trying out those lenses. I mean, even for this trip, I decided to pack just light prime lenses. So I have in my backpack the Bodice 25 <laughs> and the 55, just because like they produce great image quality and they're just so easy to carry around and use. What are some of the questions that you get on your channel uh, regarding, well, I'm in particular interested in hybrid because I think, you know, I do both, but I can't see doing both at once and so many people are doing both at once. How do you, I mean, do you, do you get questions about that? Uh, questions I usually get is, is Vivian mad at me? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do get a lot of like gear related questions. I think a lot of people, um, especially on our channel, is a lot of photographers mainly first. Like they are, I've always been like photographers, experienced, but then they want to get into videography because now the cameras are able to do both so well within one system. So we do get a lot of questions like, oh, I already have like this lens already that I use for photos. Like how does it work for video? Or do you recommend us getting like a whole different lens for video, you know, like how can we make it work with what we have? And I think that's what we're really trying to do is market like what's already out there so that people don't necessarily have to like buy two different systems of things. And, and just to add on to that last little joke that I threw in, <laughs> it's, it's just because, you know, we talked about, you know, all these gear like that are like right here that are present. And a lot of people who watch me, it's just like, wow, my spouse is mad at me because you just made me buy another lens because of our recommendation. So it's always, we have this like fun little comedy bit on our YouTube channel. It's just like, well, I bought something new. And then she's like, what did you buy now? Well, okay, see, I'm all about like cost efficiency. So when he's like, oh, when I buy something, I'm just like, isn't that kind of similar? Or don't you have something like that? So I'm like, explain it to me that I don't understand understand this very well. So explain to me why you need it, even though I think it's similar, right? So that's what I talk about. We have to find the thing that's great cost efficient wise. Like it works for both. So I was always like, explain to me why. Yeah, and it's always and it's always kind of like goes back to the channel. It's just like if I can explain it to her and she understand it, then it's gonna be a great way to explain something to our viewers that watch us. And they can go back and tell their wives that so they don't get mad at them for <laughs> buying expensive things. <laughs> well I think I would get probably someone saying to me, oh, why do you need Primes when you can get a zoom that covers all the range, especially for video. How do you uh, reason that out? Well, Primes, I think, produces an image that image or even photos that has a unique look. I mean, like with Primes too, you can stop down to something like an f2 or f1.4, 1.8. You can get that extra light in or that you know bokeh in your photo. So I think like I think like in terms of like getting the great image quality and carrying like. Less amount, the least amount of gear, I think that's where prime lenses actually really play a really good part. Oh, you agree? I no, I totally agree. Just because I, with the primes that I've used, they've always been very like nice and lightweight. And I think Zoom, like they have their great functionality, and we always recommend that if someone is maybe more like cost conscious or like you know everyone has a different reason and background. But then when we ask about like what is their purpose, and we always t try to ask them more like what do you need it for? We always tend to end up recommending the primes because we it find that light. we tell them like. It works for this, but actually, did you know it can actually do this? And then they're like, oh, I didn't even really think about it. And then they're like, okay, I can actually utilize the Prime in a lot more ways than I thought. 
Yeah, one of the big things I have always recommend with the Zeiss 18 in particular is that it, it's a great lens for gimbal work. I mean, it's a light, it's a light combination, and you pair it up with like a lightweight gimbal. I mean, you're going to get some fantastic footage out of it. And with the whole autofocus just working so well with the Sony cameras, it's it's a combo you can't really beat. And I totally agree on that. I do all the gimbal work, so. Those gimbals with the camera and the lens are like heavy, so I'm always like, okay, whatever's the lightest and it works for me, that's what I want. Anytime because I then... have her shoot with a gimbal with a <laughs> zoom lens, she's like, this is heavy, my arm's getting tired, the gimbal's yeah. not reacting the way that I want. Exactly, when it's light, I don't have to worry about like changing the focal length, I can just like go and shoot. If I need to get closer, I can, and then it just gives me great image. I don't have to worry and about it. And it just like, it just frees you up, right? Like yeah. you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm struggling trying to, you know, get the shot, or like, okay, I'm more focused on getting the shot rather than it's just like, feeling fatigued or tired so that and I think I'm really about um, composition and like aesthetics about like shots and I think not worrying about like my equipment messing up or like doing something I can actually focus on just trying to get that shot and I think having like that lightweight setup makes me not worry about any of that all right well thank you very much for joining us I hope there's not any kind of disagreement when you get your hands on the 40 about it not you, being frugal enough. You, you, you approve, know, you approve, I actually you approve the purchase, really right? approve of the Zeiss because, you know what, because they're really, no, they're designed so well and they're like, they're beautiful. Aesthetically pieces, beautiful. Like, That's like one of the big things I say. pleasing. And I think like when I see them all together, I'm just like, this works. You have a set already. Just, you can keep adding to that. Just because I know it's good. So I'm like, that's okay. You, fueling, <laughs> fueling my gear. <laughs> the board is a very interesting lane that I haven't seen much a lot. So I'm like, dude, do it. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you. Zeiss Ambassador Brian Matias is a Portland, Oregon-based photographer, writer, and podcaster who fuses landscape and travel photography. All right, Brian, thanks for joining us today. Um, tell us a little bit about your background with uh, Zeiss and your transformation and so forth. My metamorphosis. Exactly. Uh, well, I've been a Zeiss Ambassador very proudly for a, year, a few years now. I can't remember if it was like three years or so, but uh, I've been part of this team for a while and I've been using Zeiss lenses with my Sony camera f for as long uh, and I love it. I love the products that they're putting out. I like the options that I have as far as uh, creative opportunity with the focal lengths that they give me and just image quality, like the image reproduction that I get with those lenses are, I mean, incomparable. So it's, uh, it's a good time to be a photographer. What about making, you uh, made a transition from using zooms a lot to primes. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, before I, I switched to mirrorless when Sony first released the A7, like the original one five or six years ago. And before that I was Canon. And with Canon, I shot pretty much all zoom lenses. So like a 16, 35 and a 24, 70. But when I saw the prime lenses that Zeiss was making specifically for Sony's full frame e-mount, uh, there was something about, I never really used primes very often, but there was this kind of like a, I call it like a creative challenge that primes offer, where with zooms, zooms are very convenient. You know, you put one on and if you need to get a little tighter, you just twist the barrel. But with, uh, with prime lenses, uh, that's your focal length. And there's something about seeing that fixed focal length and figuring out is this the ideal composition, you know, moving back, move, you know, maybe up or down, pivoting your camera, uh, that it kind of turned me kind of into a prime snob. So like I love shooting primes. Also, just uh, the f also just the fact that uh, with primes, typically you're getting uh, a, a much sharper image, uh, a wider or a larger aperture, and it's typically in a, sometimes a smaller and lighter uh, body compared to a zoom, which is especially if you're shooting towards the 2.8 uh, zoom lenses, those are usually pretty big and pretty heavy. So uh, I do mostly landscape photography, which requires a lot of hiking. And I found that it, the weight savings alone is also huge. Yeah, it's funny. Some people would say that um, you save weight with zooms because you have, you know, all these focal lengths in that range, the 16 to 35, the 24 to 70, whatever. 80 to 200. Right. I mean, for some people, including myself, that might be kind of a leap to go, you know, it might be a little scary, you know, using primes as a journalist or whatever. Um, you know, what kind of, uh, what kind of shift was that for you? Was it easy or difficult or? Um, for me, the, admittedly, the shift wasn't too bad, uh, only because 
my subject matter doesn't move. So a journalist, for example, you know, you, you, oftentimes you're at a distance from your subject and you need to get, you know, either get wide or get close. Um, for me, before I did landscape, I was doing architecture, you know, growing up here in New York. Uh, so my buildings, all the buildings around me were my subjects. And so yeah, I found that I was able to concentrate more on the photos that I wanted to get the compositions by having that fixed focal length as opposed to the convenience of a Zoom. I am not knocking Zooms. I think Zooms are really important and I still own Zooms I, and I still use Zooms. But when I want to go out and you know be methodical with my work, I find that using a Prime pairs up really well with uh, kind of like that creative pursuit. And I know it kind of sounds you know kind of hippy dippy, but it's true. You know, there is really something about um, when I go out into the gorge in Oregon, you know, when I'm surrounded by forests and waterfalls, having the, if I have this uh, focal length, let's say it's a, a 35 millimeter, and it's, it, it, let's say the, the photo calls for an 18, rather than switching my lens, I will work with the 35 and I will find a composition. And there, the, in, that, in that process, in that search, that's where I think you really grow as a photographer. Um, yes, I can swap and put an 18 on afterwards to get the original photo, but there, I almost always find there's like a serendipitous kind of moment where it's like, oh, I never would have thought about this, you know, at a 35 millimeter length, like, oh, this compression is different or uh, uh, eliminating or, or, or uh, e extracting this particular subject because I can't fit it in my frame le leaves me with this photo. Um, I think that there's something real, there's a lot of merit to that. And I, and I do, I think it's fair, you know, to say, yeah, that's, you know, that can be scary to some photographers. It's the same way with, uh, I, I love the Loxia line, uh, the Zeiss Loxia primes, because they're built like tanks, they're really small, but they're manual focus. And for someone who, you know, grew up with autofocus, the benefits of autofocus, uh, switching over to that initially was very intimidating because if there's one thing that you can't do today with modern technology is uh, reattain focus. Once you expose, if you miss your focus, you're done. That's it. The, if you miss your focus, the, the photo is garbage. And so um, there's challenge in that. Um, understanding to the relationship of your distance from you to your subject and you know making sure that you use your focus ring correctly but there's also a, there's a lot of payoff with that there's a, there's a reward it almost pays back with dividends when you get that shot also it, it's really nice rather than walking around with some giant huge lens you know you, the, these Loxia lenses are much smaller they're more unassuming so when I'm walking around Chinatown for example the last thing I want is for someone to kind of notice me so I can kind of sit back with my small lens, you know, kind of anticipate the distance that they're going to be for me, get it ready, like any legacy street photographer, and get the shot. So, uh, and I don't have to break my back with that, with a heavier lens. So that's cool too. Join us next week on Full Exposure when we come back to the Photo Plus Expo and speak with Zeiss reps about all things optics. Thanks for tuning in. Join us next week for another edition of Zeiss Presents Full Exposure. If you can't watch, you can always catch the audio-only version on iTunes and Spotify. Follow us on Instagram at Zeiss underscore Full Exposure or on the web at ZeissFullExposure.com. And to learn about the latest in Zeiss lenses, head to Zeiss.com. <laughs>